Okay, hi, um, my name is Alex Donovan. So I don't really know where to start, but um, so I'll just start with my kind of rugby career, I guess. So I recently retired from playing international rugby. Um, so I played, uh, well, I come from a really sporty background, I guess. And then I played um, rugby from probably about five years ago and got into the Welsh squad that way. Um, and then, yeah, recently I retired a couple of weeks ago, but in kind of the background, I own a couple of yoga companies. So I own a yoga company called Yoga Ability, which is um, my own kind of yoga method. And I own two studios in Cardiff um, called The Yoga Hub, which I'm representing today. Um, and yeah, so and like I, loads of people ask about uh, your kind of best achievements and all that. And one of my best achievements actually is I uh, won a burger eating competition in New York. <laughs> so that's probably one of my, and honestly, when I get like uh, interviewed in rugby and all of that, that's still the thing that comes to my head. It was, I feel like it was so impressive. <laughs> so um, that's kind of the background. I guess that's my introduction. I know you guys have got questions about how I got into this position and all of that. So um, that's basically all I prepared. <laughs> so if you want to crack on with the questions. You ready? That sounds good. <laughs> uh, what was your favourite moment from your career? Um, Rugby-wise? Or... Rugby yeah, rugby-wise. Um, okay, so I've got two that kind of stand, stand out, really. Um, the first one was my first ever Welsh game. So we didn't get caps for all the games, but my first ever Welsh kind of a, appearance. I um, got man of the match, uh, which was really cool. And I actually started for Wales before I started for my club, which sounds really weird, but um, basically it's just all to do with selection, isn't it? So the coach of Wales, I guess, rated me more than the coach of my club. So I actually started for Wales before my club. Um, and then the other one is I actually got my first cap against um, Italy in the Principality Stadium. So that's probably another standout moment. I, I remember getting interviewed after the game and... And they were like, how did it go? And I was like, oh, it was amazing. It was like the best day of my life, blah, blah, blah. like all good. And they were like, oh, didn't you lose? I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I mean, it wasn't great. But yeah, so I just like remember those two, probably the, the main ones. Um, how did you know it was time to retire? Um, it's actually come about probably a little bit earlier than I would have thought. Um, when you're in the Welsh squad, it's it's really hard at the moment to balance, I guess, the work and I guess the and the pandemic and everything. I think I knew with commitment you give to to be in the Welsh squad. I kind of as soon as you start second guessing whether this is what you want, you've already got one foot out the door just because it takes so much commitment. And I just didn't want to end up not enjoying the game that I love and it got to the point where it was actually feeling like a chore rather than I really wanted to go and I really wanted to play. Um, so I guess because of everything to do with like work and rugby and all of that, it just became harder for me than I kind of imagined it being. And I just, the love of the game kind of started going out of it for me. And I was like, I don't want to be in a position where I'm not enjoying it anymore. And because obviously we don't get paid or anything, if you don't enjoy it, I'm always like, well, what, what, there's no other reason really that you, you're doing it. You're doing it for the enjoyment. So I kind of knew it was my time to go when I was like driving there being like, oh, this is just really hard. Like I was just tired every day and, and all of that. And I wanted to finish on a high and I think I, I've done that now. What was your driving force as a player? As a player. So, um... I think it comes from my parents mainly, as in they're, they're really sporty. So my dad played rugby for Wales and my mum actually, she's 63 and she still plays hockey for Wales. Like they're ridiculously sporty. Um, but my when I joined rugby, one of my best, one of my best friends, um, Ellie Norkett, actually died in a car accident when like the night before we were meant to play. And I think she's always been the reason I play. And it was in her memorial game that I actually got selected for Wales, which I don't even think is a coincidence. I feel like I always played for her because she was in the Welsh squad as well. So she's definitely been like my driving force. And and I've always been the type of person to, I always think like if you've got talent and if you, you know, that 
you'll ne- if you don't try something, you'll never know how far you can get in the game and how far you can go. And I, I've always liked the, the physical challenge of sport and, you know, pushing myself. So I think it's like little aspects of everything, but I think it's to do with like who you are inside as well. So like that gives you the driver to see how far you can get in the game. Who's your biggest inspiration in life? Um, so I would say Ellie mainly, and um, in rugby it would be my dad as well. Like, and it's not even to do with the rugby ability. Weirdly, like everyone that meets him is just like he's so nice, <laughs> and he is, and I I love that. I love when people like they can say all of his achievements, but they say he's what a nice guy, and I, like I love that. I love that, and I think people nice people like they they if you're if you're a nice person people want you to do well and they want you to succeed um and that comes I think from my parents and even and like my sister's just great and like I'm surrounded by all these like really nice people but but they're so inspirational in, in the way of how they carry themselves every day as well and they're they're everyone wants them to succeed because they they I guess they're just nice people what is your driving force as a business owner as a business owner, um, the biggest thing I think is you have to be passionate. You have to believe in what you're selling. So I really like my yoga method. I, I it's worked for me, and it's 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 something that's actually changed my life. So because I really believe in my product, it's kind of an easy easy sell, and that's kind of what's behind me wanting everyone else to do it is because it's helped me so much that I think it can help a lot of people um it's different things like I, I'm massively about a work-life balance so I don't think you should spend your entire life working I think you you work to a point like I'm not I'm not really money driven or anything like that I'm more about okay what gives me the flexibility to do what I love work-wise but also have the freedom to spend time with my friends, like go on a holiday whenever I want to and on all of that. So I think it's a little bit of everything. I, I am really self-motivated anyway, and I work hard, but I think you work harder if it's for yourself. So that's why I think self-employment really works for me as well. How, <coughs> how has COVID impacted you and how did you have to adapt? Um, so when COVID, basically I opened the yoga studio three weeks before COVID. So it was a nightmare timing wise because throughout COVID now we've still had to pay rent, but we've had no income. And because we opened so close to when COVID happened, um, we didn't get any funding either. So it was like a massive shock. Obviously, our industry, everything just went on hold because it wasn't essential. Um, Everything just stopped. So I actually turned my business into an online business um, and I just started doing free classes like to be honest, I never really thought about it business way uh, in in a business way because I was really lucky. Like my partner's still in in work and he was still employed, so we didn't really need the money. So I just started doing free classes on Instagram for me and my friends to do every day, and then it ended up like hundreds of people were joining in. Um, so then from there we were like, oh, maybe there's a business here. So me and my friend were like, oh, should we set up an online yoga kind of studio in a way? Um, to give people the option that if they can't come to Cardiff, if they don't want to go to a yoga studio, they can do it online. So I kind of turned it from like being literally had no work to do. And now I've started a business through it, I guess. So it's worked out really well. What is your life's philosophy? My life's philosophy. So I'm like a massive fan of quotes. So I really like... um, the quote is what you do in the dark that puts you in the light so I refer you can refer this back to anything so even with rugby like people see the one percent of rugby they see like you're playing for Wales and it's amazing and all this but it's actually the 99 percent that actually gets you that one percent and the people the things that people don't see is the hard work and I also like the quote is um what if you fall uh no what if I fall oh but my darling what if you fly so it's that quote of if you don't try you'll never know so I and it's like the the saying about the doubts the doubt can kill more dreams than uh, than failure ever will because people are just too scared to try stuff and I think that's where I've been really lucky I guess just naturally I'm not scared of trying stuff business-wise or sport-wise because the worst case scenario is you'll go back to where you are now there's no harm in trying things 
And I think that's how I kind of live my life and, and business and rugby wise. What would your advice be to girls who want to break into like international rugby? International rugby. So with girls, I think enjoyment is so important. So you need to find a team that you're enjoying because that will give you the motivation to want to keep going all the time. So initially it would be through enjoyment. And don't listen to, if you're not getting selected, if you're not getting, you know, if a coach doesn't like you, it's one person's opinion. So I would just say not to get, I guess, disheartened if you're not in the starting squad. It would just be to work really hard and be really present, like in training and on the pitch, because I think people get really nervous and, and can almost get carried away with how nervous they are. Um, so it would just be really present, just just. Um, focus on the job you've got and I think a lot of people don't actually do that in a game if you can do that in a game and do that in training and in life you'll, you'll progress so quickly because you're focusing on what you're doing doing there and then and it would definitely just be not, not to give up I mean if you're passionate if you're that passionate about it there's nothing stopping you from from reaching the wall squad um it's gonna it's, it is hard work and physically mentally and anything you can do in your own time that's pro probably what's really important. Like in Wales, you don't get enough time to train um, if you want to reach that level. So you have to do the work on your own. You have to like, you know, practice skills with your parents, or your friends or anything like that. That will take you the step ahead in Welsh rugby. What would your advice be for female business owners or those who want to start their own business? Um, same kind of thing as I've just said. I think I would say just to try it like the not don't be scared to ask for help like that's one thing I've never been worried about like people are in the industry who have done it for years and they can actually help you and you can learn from other people's mistakes so I would say definitely not to not to be scared to try it not to be scared to ask for help and every single person in business is winging it like no one really knows what they're doing they just follow kind of how it goes so don't worry if you haven't got a set plan um just kind of if you're so if you're passionate enough about it and you believe in your product it doesn't really matter kind of if the plan doesn't I guess if whatever you had in your head doesn't go to plan um so definitely try and ask questions learn from people that have done it before but I would just say like same thing as rugby just motivation keep keep going and, and work hard behind closed doors Have you always been interested in yoga and what gave you the idea to start it as a business? No, so I wasn't interested in yoga at all when I when I actually found it. I um I used to be a, a big netballer and I ruptured my Achilles. So my Achilles kind of snapped off the calf muscle when I was playing. And when I went to get uh to see the consultants, they said, Oh, we can't operate on your Achilles because it, it's come off the calf muscle, we can't operate it back, we can't like sew it back into muscle. So they said, Oh, you're gonna have to kind of heal it yourself. So like it was like a year in a moon boot. And they said, Oh, we'll um you have to, you may have to start something like yoga. So I was like, Oh god, I was like, I don't really want to do this like yoga thing. So I went to a yoga class, didn't really like it, but the benefits of yoga kind of outweighed how much I enjoyed it. But then I thought oh, there must be more people like me that kind of like the physical side of yoga, but don't really like the Zen kind of side. So the me mentality side of it. Um, so I was like Googling our yoga for athletes or the physical side of yoga, all this, and I just couldn't find anything. So I thought, oh, I'll just create my own method. So then I did like my yoga course, I did my mobility and movement course. And then from there, I just decided to create my own method. So I wasn't into it initially. It was just the benefits of it kind of outweighed how much I enjoyed it. But I tried to make it into a class that people like me could enjoy. Because there's loads of different styles. I thought there was only one style. But there's so many different styles of yoga. And that's why I kind of got into it. And that's why I've done it ever since, really. How has yoga changed your life? Yoga, sorry, yeah. yeah. Um, so, well, from injury, like they, when I first, when I first rushed to the they said, oh, you won't go back to play netball and you won't go back to sport because it depends how the Achilles reattaches the path. So 
you probably won't go back to being able to sprint instead. So yoga is probably the reason that I, I was able to play rugby after my injury and, and I was able to do any sport. So it's changed my life in the way of, I'll tell you this, it's changed my life in all the ways. Like my job now is teaching yoga. Um, I own two two studios, so it's it's mad really. Like I couldn't I couldn't really imagine my life without it now. And even if I'm not teaching every morning, I get up and I do some sort of yoga flow because it's just like my favorite way to start the day. Even though my like some people still really hate it, so it doesn't matter if you don't like it. I just really like. It. What does New Horizons mean to you? New horizon. So I think for me personally, it just means like the start of something. So even with like me retiring now from rugby, um, I don't see it as the end. I see it as the start of a new chapter. And I think that's what new horizons means. I think as well, you can refer this to like every day. So every day is a new day. So it's a new beginning. It's like a ch chance to start again. And I really am a massive believer that like the good days don't really last, which is a really negative way of looking at it. The good days, you've got to make the most of the good days, but then when you look at the bad days, they don't last either. So if you're having a bad day, wake up, new horizon, it's a new day, and you can start again. So I think it's just giving yourself a chance and reassurance that you can start again whenever you want to. Do. 